Welcome back, everybody. Let us now talk about the Toronto Blue Jays, who are one of the most interesting young teams to watch for in baseball right now, I would say. Especially with the left side of the infield and second base. Especially those three positions. Um, because of who they are. Um, I think they're one of the most... They could be one of the most entertaining teams to watch. Now, are their games going to be fun to... Or are the final scores going to be nice to look at? It depends. Probably not. But let us talk about the Toronto Blue Jays uh, in the upcoming season and see how well I think they can do. Last year, they finished 67-95. and 95, So, 20... 20, what, 7 games below 500? 28... 28 games below 500. My public education math right here. Uh, fourth in the AL East. So, they nowhere near the playoffs. And I don't think they will be, considering the division they are playing in for probably a very long time. Um, I think goal, uh, goal for the Blue Jays this year is, I don't think, to lose 100 games. Because here's the thing with the Blue Jays. They're not going anywhere. They're not in the hunt for a playoff spot. They are not even in the hunt for third place in their division right now. They're, the only hunt they're in is to be out of the cellar of the AL East. So I think goal for them is not to lose 100 games. That, and another goal, I think, is to keep developing these young players that they have drafted and through their minor league system and everything because they have a really young team and calling up people too early or pretty much calling people up too early or not giving them the full um, training and development stages could ruin their career. So Toronto's got to balance that tight walk, tight, tight, tight walk, tight walk, I think. So they have to be careful with that. So they got a lot of good young guys in their system and on the major league team. Uh, key additions, uh, they really didn't do a lot in free agency. A lot of uh, clear... Uh, getting other pieces, but they got one really big move, and that was signing Ryu uh, off the Dodgers, who was a free agent. They signed him for, I think it was, four years at $80 million? I mean, it's probably a little bit of a steep price to pay for Ryu, who's right now 32. He had his best year of his career in Major League Baseball. And I think he was the ERA leader last year. If not one, two. If not, if not one, he was two. He was really close up there, and he had a really good year. He started to hit some bumps in the road near the end of the season, but if you take the whole season into account, he did really well. Um, how is he going to pitch in the AL, especially the AL East? I don't know. It's going to be something we're going to have to watch out for through the entire season. Uh, they also got another starting pitcher in Tanner Roark, who I think is nice. He's a solid three four guy. He's not great anymore. He's still got good stuff. He's still got good command and change of speed and everything. So he's a comp. He's a competent pitcher. He can get you to the, the sixth or seventh inning if he needs to. Uh, he's, yeah. Uh, and then you guys also signed Travis Shaw, uh, who's going to, because he's not taking over third base. He's going to be the first baseman after Justin Smoke left for free agency, which I think it's a good move getting rid of Smoke and getting Shaw. The only thing that I think is a little bit different, they both have the same amount of fielding capability, I think. Uh, Smoke's a switch hitter, Shaw's not, so you lose that advantage that right there. But I think Shaw will do you better now than Smoke it will. Uh, like I mentioned, they lost Smoke to free agency. Like I mentioned, I think it was a okay move to get move on from Justin Smoke. I think he was just in the decline and didn't see him getting out of it. So I don't mind uh, Toronto getting rid of Justin Smoke or moving on from Justin Smoke. Uh, stuff to look for. I think really the only thing to look for is the development of the young guys, especially on the major league roster. Because, I mean, you got Vladdy Jr., who can't feel worth a crap right now. We'll see if he can throughout the season. But he's not, he's not a great fielder, but he can rake. Uh, I mean, Bo Bichette, who can who's looking like a five-tool guy. He can run, he can hit, he can hit for power. 
He's a really good fielder, especially at shortstop. That's kind of what you need. Um, and he can throw. So Bichette's looking really well. He's really young. I think he's only 21. So we'll see what he can do throughout the entire uh throughout the entire um 162 game season. Because a lot of these guys, Vladdy, Bichette, and Biggio, they called up last year. So they weren't on the major league roster last year to, be, to begin with. But um then you got Kevin Biggio, who played, I think, probably the most out of all three of these guys. Uh left handed bat, that's which is always a nice thing to have in a lineup. Uh he didn't do great last year. I mean, his on base percentage is three sixty four. That's pretty good. A two thirty four on or not on base two thirty four batting average is kind of low. That's not good, especially for a second baseman. Um, eighty three hits and three hundred fifty four at bats. Um, I mean, he struck out one hundred twenty three times. If he could get down the strikeout numbers, that'd be nice. But and he hit sixteen homers last year, so you know he's got pop in his bat. It's just if you could get the strikeout numbers down, and that'd be nice, and put more balls in play. Um, but I really think it's just, if you're a Toronto fan, I really think the only thing to look for this year is the development of the talent that you guys have currently on the roster. Uh, I think uh, players to look for as well. I, uh, you guys also picked up another pitcher for agency deal is uh, Yamaguchi uh, from, I believe, Japan. So let's see if he how he adjusts to uh, Major League Baseball and see how well he does throughout the full season if he plays the whole season. Um, and I think my guess for the Blue Jays, where they're going to place in the American League East, there's no way they're finishing last in that division. Unless a nuclear weapon gets dropped on Toronto. There's no way they're finishing last. I think they'll finish fourth in the AL East at best. That's the best they're getting. Uh, they're going nowhere now, so they're just building for the future at this point. But that's the end of the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below about Toronto. Do you think? Uh, do you think that these young guys are maybe a little bit overhyped? Maybe, especially Guerrero, Bichette, and Biggio. Uh, what about Guriel in left field? Uh, let me know what you guys think about anything on Toronto. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Share this video with all your friends and buddies. And I will see you guys in the next video.